Today, I'm going to be teaching you something very cool, but also very dangerous, and that is JavaScript variables. Imagine you can let people create code without actually editing your plugin. I'm going to be showing you a simple example. We have a JavaScript command we're going to be creating in just a few minutes. And you can do simple mathematical calculations like this one, even more, say advanced calculations like this one. And you can even get an object such as a player, which will return the NMS player, and then you can call different methods. There we go. And you can even set different modifiers right here, set display name, hey, and then when I call get display name, there we go. Now it actually returns this and just to give you an illustration set game mode, and you can even do some pretty cool stuff such as changing the player's game mode from your plugins file, for example, set game mode, game mode creative, however, this is not going to work, because you need to create a little bit more uh, advanced syntax, which I'm going to teach you in a minute. For example, now we have a Java type and then you put in the package name right there and then you open that package. I uh, saw you, you load that enumerations uh, creative field like that. Check it out. Hit enter. Boom. No result returned because this is a void. And now I am in a creative mode. You can use JavaScript for so many features. For example, in one of my plugins, chat control, you can create customized chat and you can build the chat based on multiple parts. And each part can have different uh, keys depending how you want to render it. One of the keys is called sender variable. And that is actually parsed as a JavaScript. So for example, we're going to be also showing you how to parse a variables inside JavaScript. And when sender is this code variable is true, then this whole thing is being shown, right. And you can even customize this to basically any means you want. For example, if the player's health is below 10, boom, show uh, the prefix low health, for example, right? Same goes for here, you can even combine these using JavaScript, uh, or the same syntax pretty much as Java. So if the player is uh, players group equals admin, or he is a moderator, boom, now we can show a prefix for him, which is really, really cool. Are you ready? Let's crack into it. First things first, a little bit of theory. When you have a Java program written in Java, it gets compiled into bytecode, and you can't really edit it. However, Java has something called Nashorn project, which lets you dynamically compile you know, Java script inside a running Java virtual machine, which in this case is our micro server. So to put it simply, you can run a server, you can run a plugin on that server, and then you can input code using a command as we've seen in the beginning of this video. And it's going to be compiled live as a JavaScript code on the fly, which is really cool. How do you do that? Well, turns out Java no longer ships that part of its library, I guess, and we have to get it externally. Good thing is that the uh, micro plugin micro server contains this feature called libraries, if you go ahead and open up your plugin.yml, you're going to be able to just type in org.openjdk.nashhorn, colon, nashhorn.core, colon, and then the latest version. If you don't know what the latest version is, because they update quite frequently, you can just paste their package in Google, and then look for mvn repository.com, and then open up nashhorn core. And there you go. This is the latest, as you can see, they're quite frequent updates. I actually contributed to these two. I reported a couple of issues with them, which was really cool. Uh, by the way, let's take a step back. If you never worked with any of this before, if that's confusing, like what is this code? How do I do that? I'll uh, check out my full plugin tutorial series here on YouTube, especially the first couple of videos. We also have a full training. If you are serious about your development journey, you, you want to learn Java, you want to learn Minecraft plugin development, just skip the free stuff and you, you can go into the best stuff right as well. Uh, right away, we have a full course for you. So I'm going to leave a link to that in the video description. But I've already have made over 60 free videos online. So if you want to learn uh, bits by bits, and you want to try that, uh, go ahead and watch my earlier tutorials. This video assumes that you already ma have made a Minecraft plugin and he already understands uh, how to make a Minecraft plugin, at least basics. If you haven't, go back or take our coding classes. Either way, one is free, one is paid. Um, but you have to know the basics before you continue watching this video. Okay, so step number one, we need to load the Nashorn library. Again, we're going to be using the embedded uh, plugin.yml's libraries feature. This is for spigot and for paper. 
This also means you need to use at least 1.16. This feature was not included before 1.16. So if you are still on 1.8, there are some ways and I can make a different video on how to load custom libraries on 1.8, but for now it's not going to work. Okay. So make sure to put this in your plugin YML. And then when it comes to your main Kokanoon class that we're building throughout this YouTube series, uh, we just need to go and we just need to create a new command. So get command and I'm just going to call I'm just going to call it JavaScript and then set executor new JavaScript command, which is a class that I'll show you in a second. Okay. Also make sure to go in the command section back in the same plugin YML file. And then at the, at the end, I simply made and, and registered a new JavaScript command with an alias JS. If I type in slash JS, it will run the same command. And then with a bunch of uh, default keys, which you can customize to your likings, which means now uh, the bucket is properly going to make this command work. Now, this command is going to b give you a brief demo, but if you watch my entire YouTube tutorial series, you will understand how to use JavaScript in a config file, like I showed you at the beginning with chat control in a GUI, right? Because you can just plug it in uh, pretty much anywhere and it will be very flexible. Great. So let's move on. This is the class for the command. If you uh, have not made a Minecraft command before, again, I have a completely free video on just that, how to make commands. Go check it out. See you later. Uh, but it's a simple class called JavaScript command implements executor. And then I override the material to called on command. Right. And we of course need some code here. So if I just type slash JavaScript, which means there is no arguments, we're simply return it with an error message. Now what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to get the line. So I'm going to get, if I type in, I don't know, slash JavaScript or JS, hello world. I want to get all the arguments. So hello and world, and I want to join them by space so that the line is going to be the full JS code. Now here comes a little bit of a bonus part that I wanted to throw in. If you are a player and we have placeholder API plugin, we can actually set placeholders here. That means you can di directly replace uh, placeholders uh, before you compile your code. And this is something that uh, you've seen in the introduction of this video where I replaced these uh, beautiful placeholders right here. If you don't have placeholder API set up and if you don't have this class available for you, that's fine. Check out my placeholder API video here on YouTube. Again, completely free video on how to get this class installed. If you don't just skip these lines, then what do we need to do? We need to make a new script engine manager, just like this. Next up comes the script engine factory. This is a bit tricky because we need to load the class first and the class is as follows. And by the way, if you do not want to copy everything from the screen, uh, check out the blog post below. I posted the link to the source code of this video, so you can just copy that portion of the code if you need to. So we need to load the class from org open JDK Nashorn package. This is the Nashorn script engine factory. And as you guessed it, Java has support for multiple script. So for, theoretically, it could process multiple languages. And there is actually a project called Growl VM, which I'm not going to cover in this video. There are some downsides to use JavaScript from this project. So I'm not going to cover it because of these reasons, uh, but you can check it out independently later, and then you will be able to load uh, that too, and maybe even parse different coding languages in uh, your micro plugin, which is really cool. So back here, we have to use the try and catch block because this class for name throws the uh, class not found exception among a bunch of others. So we just have to do that this way. And then finally, now that we have loaded the Nashorn, we can go into the manager and we can call a register engine name Nashorn drum rolls and then the engine factory itself bit complicated. I know, just stick with me. And what I recommend you do can actually copy this and put it somewhere up here so that you can only do it once as a field. And you'll also make the plugin uh, do uh, run much faster. And then finally, finally, you can just call script engine engine. And then you can go to the manager and you can get the engine by the same name that we registered it. Now, at the beginning of this video, if you remember correctly, I type player inside the chat right? And the player is something called a binding. In other words, in Java, it is a variable. We can pass Java variables to JavaScript by getting the engine's bindings for the scope of the whole engine like this. And then first of all, I recommend you clear them. So you uh, flush it from the history so that you don't get any old references. And then we can simply put in the player as the command sender and the command sender is parsed 
from the command center here in the method itself. That means you can just type in player and it will either return a console or an actual uh, player in JavaScript, which is really cool. Now, here comes the magic. How do you actually run the code? Well, turns out there's a method called evil in the engine, so you can call it like this, and then it's going to return something. Sometimes it doesn't return anything. As I said, for voids, this is normal. However, sometimes it will return something. For example, if I try to do any math like one plus five times nine point four, something like that, whatever uh, is logically returnable. So what we can do, we can simply send the sender a message. If the result is null, we can say no result. However, then we can simply print the class of the result so that you can learn how that whole thing works, as well as the result itself. This is going to be uh, read by the way, because it also requires a try and catch block. So let's just put it right here. There we go. And then if there is a problem here, we can simply print it to the console and I'll show you how that works in a second. And then we can simply send the send sender a message saying that there was a problem. Okay, so JavaScript right here, I, I already reloaded the server and it works just fine as I shown you at the beginning of this video. So let's just type in JS and then we can type in one, I don't know, times eight plus nine plus four. There we go, that's 21. And you see that that is an integer. What happens if I do something that shouldn't work like zero divided by zero. Okay, that's a nan, that's a not a number. But what happens if I type in something that definitely shouldn't exist? There we go. It says that this little thing is not defined as a variable. In other words, we'd have to be putting this thing here. We, and I only put player. So if I type in player, now it says we got a player. And you can actually invoke all the methods. Whoops. If I type something wrong, it again says that's not that's not a function or that's not defined. But if I type in a method that is valid, it will simply return get uh, the name. And you actually have all these methods available. It's, it works the same way as in Bucket. The only exception is at the beginning of, the, of this video, I, t I thought you that if you want to um, evaluate code and you want to invoke Java functions, you have to go through Java and then dot type. Right? And I'm going to send you these articles right here. There are two articles which are really cool. One is from 2014, really old, but still relevant. Code still works, haven't changed that much. And the other one is a little bit of a different approach. I personally prefer this one. So if you want to load, for example, the runnable class, you're just going to do java.type and then type in the full uh, package name and the class name. And then you can actually run stuff from the runnable like this one. Now, of course, this takes in multiple lines. So the question is, how do you load this from multiple lines? Well, the answer is very simple. You can just store the code in a .js file somewhere on your disk. For example, if we have our cow canoe right here, let's just create a new test.js file, right? And then here you can simply open up the file inside our data folder and then test dot js just like this and then the file is going to be read you you sync for example files method read all lines file dot two path just like this and then again there's an unhandled exception here so what we can do we can just copy paste it inside the try and catch block and then maybe we can change this to an exemption like this and then we can simply evil all the lines and we can simply join them by the new line character like this there we go let's save it and then going back here in the test.js file, let's just open it like this one in any text editor. And then we can simply copy this code, paste it here, save it. And then I guess if we type in anything, it says no result. But if you open up the console, now the code is changed. In the console, it actually says printed from a separate thread, printed from another thread. Okay, so this is a little trick on how to parse a multi-line uh, JavaScript from a file. Before I finish, let's talk about security. JavaScript, it lets you invoke any Java method. If you give players access to this, you're done. Someone can just type in set op true, and now you're op. Okay, someone can just type in Java type bucket, and then they can call the method that we have right here shut down like this and with a push of a button the entire network gets shut down it is very very dangerous not to say that they can use uh, javascript to access java's files method and they can read the content of your disk they can download files from the internet they can download a virus upload it they can read your database 
Jesus, they can do whatever they want. So it's very, very, very dangerous. And you can only give access to a trusted individual. I never let players run any JavaScript whatsoever. I only implemented this in my plugin chat control for administrators of the server who have access to the FTP and they've uploaded all the plugins there and they have access to basically the plugins folder. They're configuring the database information and in the next folder, there's the chat format configuration and there is the JavaScript condition. So never expose this to your front end. This is a back end feature. This is mostly if you're selling a plugin or you're publishing a plugin, this is not something that you can let players do. When it comes to a calculator, there's better ways to write a simple calculator in Java. But if you try to rely on JavaScript to parse, you know, simple mathematical expressions, someone can abuse it, someone can just type in what, you know, I just demonstrated, instead of the mathematical expression, the program will print out an error, but it's actually going to run in the background silently. So it's a really, really big security um, implication right here. All right, guys, now that you know that I can close down the video and I wish you a, a super happy day. I hope you enjoyed that we're still continuing doing these episodes in 2025. Let me know down, down in the comment section if you still enjoyed it. Let me know what you want to learn this year. It's going to be super exciting and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Take care.